All right, we're getting ready to bring this to a close. And uh, John chapter 4, where we were talking about the woman at the well. From John chapter 4 and verse 19, the woman said to him, Sir, I perceive you are a prophet. Our fathers, or our forefathers, worship in this mountain. But you people say that in Jerusalem is the place where persons ought to worship. Jesus said in the 21st verse of chapter 4 of St. John said to her, Believe me, woman, the hour is coming when neither in this mountain nor in Jerusalem will you people worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know because salvation originates with the Jews. Nevertheless, the hour is coming and, then, and it is now when the true worshipers will worship the Father with spirit and truth. For indeed the Father is looking for such like ones to worship him. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship with spirit and truth. Now this is in John chapter chapter four verses uh start at verse nineteen to twenty four. You know what I mean? Uh praise the Lord. Because you notice Jesus didn't say to go worship in the mountain. He didn't say go worship in the Jerusalem in the temple where they originally were worshiping. But what he did say was the time is coming and the time now is where they got worship God must worship in spirit. No, he told her to go away. He didn't say go join such and such a temple, cathedral, church, synagogue. He didn't. He said go your way, sin no more. And you notice that's what he said to a lot of people. He never said go join this place or join that place. See, we got we have we have become commercialized. So a lot of people think they serve the Lord. They say, oh, I got a, a personal walk with the Lord. They think I got a personal walk because they they singing on gospel groups. They making money in the name of gospel. They're prestigious. They're recognized. They they are part of organizations that that are so called in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So therefore, we have a whole lot of homosexuality, a whole lot of sin, a whole lot of other stuff that's not of God. But people like your talent, so you're able to, you know, slip through, and you're not even really praying to get saved because you think you're automatically saved because you are among those who say they are part of Jesus Christ and they accept your singing because you got a beautiful voice as a man or woman. Uh, da 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 da. You bring in uh, offerings to the commercialized church. But that has nothing to do with the church that Jesus was talking about in Matthew 16, 18, when he said, upon his rock, I build my church. He's talking about a group of baptized believers in the Holy Ghost, speaking with other tongues as the Spirit of God gives us, and giving their utmost to God. You can't save yourself is a true fact. That's why we, we come to Jesus. Oh, yeah, and that scripture was in Deuteronomy 22. And five, where it says, a woman or not wear the mantle of a man, and a man or not wear the mantle of a woman. In other words, mantle is a covering, a clothes. Now, even though they had they wore robes back there, so I'm quite sure there was a differentiation between a man's robe and a woman's robe. It's like you see some women's pants don't have no back pockets. So if you see a man with no back pockets on his, uh, his what, what old people call britches on his pants, on his trousers, uh, you know those are feminine pants. And usually, if you want a woman, if she's going to wear pants, to wear design, a, a nice designed pair of feminine pants that doesn't make her look like she's masculine. You want her to wear a nice jacket and whatever she's wearing that looks feminine. You don't want her looking masculine, even with a jacket on. You don't want a man looking feminine, no matter what he's wearing. Whatever either of them are having, you want a man to look like a man, you want a woman to look like a woman. And that's what we're talking about. Don't wear the mantle of a man, woman. Don't wear the mantle of a woman, man. Dress like a man, dress like a woman. And the same thing is the priest had mantle. So a woman wasn't a priest because a priest was always a man. Oh, man, we won't even get into that. Of course, she can prophesy, thus saith the Lord, just like the women. Uh, after Jesus was resurrected, he just said, go tell my disciples to meet me in Galilee. He didn't tell them to preach the gospel. He said, go tell my disciples. That was a word. That was a prophecy. 
from the man of God, from the Spirit of the Lord. So a woman can come to you and say, what does say of the Lord? And you'll know what does say of the Lord because it's going to come to pass. When the, sheep, when, they, when the women went to these brothers and said, the Lord said, meet me in Galilee. When they met, went to Galilee, there was the Lord. That proved their prophecy was right. Their message was correct. So a woman is a help me, and prophecy is definitely a help me. And so we don't go against prophecy, praise the Lord. But we look for true prophets and not lying prophets or true prophetess and not lying prophetess in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, homosexuality being uh, uh, in any degree of even looking like homosexuality, you ought not even be looking like you're walking like a, a woman, man. And a woman ought not be looking like she's even walking like a man. And you have to get the right spirit. And when the Holy Ghost comes, as we were talking in the scriptures, that we supposed to speak all things tongues. You understand? Uh, what was that in First Corinthians chapter uh, one that we were talking about, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, then, then Proverbs, I think twenty three and seven says, "As a man thinketh in his heart, so he, like you know, you got books and stuff out that like think like a man and act like a woman. If you thinking like a man, you're gonna act like a man. If you think like a woman, you're gonna act like a woman." So it's best for a man to think like a man and a woman to think like a woman. Now, is it all right to study for the opposite to sex to study each other? A man should study how to treat a woman and know how to treat a woman. That's what the Bible teaches you. But it don't teach you to act like a woman. The Bible does teach you. 99% of the Bible, if I may take out the time to say that percentage, 99 says man rather than woman because the man is the leader. So a woman learns about a man. Then some women, even from reading the scripture, become masculine because they learn more about being a man because it talks more about a man. Well, some women learn more about trying to act like Moses, trying to act like Jesus, which is the man of God, rather than learning what the man of God was saying about how to act like a woman of God. So she thinks she's supposed to preach, she's supposed to be in a, in a in walk as a man. Now, you can't walk like a man. So to, so to say to walk for a woman, to walk like Jesus is not actually walking in Jesus' character of nature, but walking Jesus' character of meekness and humbleness and spirit. But even though he was meekness and humble in spirit, so it would cover man and woman. And then he told the woman how to act. He didn't have the women sitting there at the apostles' table. He didn't, sorry. So the apostles' doctrine, when Paul... Paul would be contradicting himself, contradicting himself if he would say that uh, a woman was supposed to preach or a woman was an apostle because that would contradict the word. No, but when it says help those women that labor with me in the gospel, that means those women that stood up for the righteousness of the gospel and for what women were supposed to do. It would be lovely if men in the gospel could have women in the gospel that know the place of the woman so they could teach the women. So women that have personal problems that don't feel secure talking to a man. These women can talk to them and keep them in a feminine role rather than a masculine role. You know, because now the devil has stepped into the commercialized church. And remember, Jesus said, upon this rock, I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail yet. So the real church, the spiritual church, there's nothing wrong with that. It's going to stay just the way Jesus found it because it's founded upon Jesus. Paul said in Corinthians, no other foundation can any man lay. Though he may try, it's going to be tried by fire. Praise the Lord, but no, no other foundation can know man like though he may try. So there's a lot of imitations, Matthew 24 and 24. And if it were possible, if it were possible, it would fool the very elect. But the elect's not going to be fooled by this stuff. That's why I'm not fooled by a lot of things. I believe that I'm elect. I would like to think so. And I don't want to fool you. I want you to be right in the Lord. I want you to be a man in the Lord. I want you to act like a man in the Lord. I want you to walk like a man in the Lord. I want you women to be feminine and sweet and low in spirit. When, when I say low, low, low and quiet and spirit, that's what I'm talking about. Quiet. That's what the book tells you in the book of First Peter chapter three. Talks about you that uh, you are the daughters of, of uh, Sarah, and she called her husband Lord. And then even you women that are not married yet into a man, you married to the Lord. So you're supposed to carry yourself humble, head covered, uh, modest in apparel. Models in speech because your husband is the Lord. 
you still got a spiritual husband. And if you loud mouth and talk about I don't got no husband, no, you don't tell me what to do. You ain't my husband. You out of order. You out of your. You out of your gourd. You out of your mind. You out of the spirit of God. You you bringing demonic cancer into the body of Christ. And we supposed to cut you off, regardless of what kind of gift you got. Because sometimes your gifts can be demonic. Men and women, I'm talking about you. Because you got a talent. You can sing. You can prophesy. You got a gift. You got people out here telling fortunes, and you can walk into their shop, and they can tell you, you could be 30 years old, they can tell you what happened to you 30 years ago. And they ain't serving no Jesus, and some of you got that kind of gift. You were gifted from you was uh, a little young man, a little young lady. Now you're a grown man, grown woman, and you're wicked and wiser. And you walk in the church with those demonic spirits on you, or if you want to say it's the gift of God, but you have not been cultivated, in the spirit of the Lord, so you can use it right in the spirit of the Lord. So you still got that evil, no good spirit that you had from not being born again. And you walk into the service of the Lord with a gift, and you've never been born again. You walk into the service with a talent, playing instruments, singing, dancing, uh, speaking, a uh, 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 spiritual gift of, of being able to see. You know what I mean? A seer. A uh, seer. Uh, 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 whether uh, 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 something like the gift of knowledge or prophecy or whatever healing, the devil does all that. If you look at me, read Matthew twenty four twenty four. It talks about uh, lying one, Second uh, Thessalonians chapter two. The devil sits in the temple, taking the place of God, and the earthly temple is taking the place of God. Mm -hmm. uh, lying wonders are being performed, healing. But at Matthew seven and twenty one, but at the end, when it comes to judgment, when they said I cast out, looks like they was casting out demons. Now, I heard a man say that the devil is not divided against himself. God said he's not divided against himself. Some kind of mannerism. If Jesus could say in Matthew 7 and 21 that they said that they were casting out demons and we see a whole lot of stuff. We see, we see pastors that claim to be homosexual. They, they, not somebody else claim, they claim it, that they're homosexual in the spirit and the gift of the, of the Lord are moving. So they have to be uh, uh, an example of Matthew 7, 21, they said they cast out demons, they prophesied in his name. And you got men that have transformed themselves to women. Now they, they not low, they always going to be a man. But of course, in the, in the fake service of the Lord or in the, in the world now, now they are no longer men, they are women. You got women who are no longer, they're always going to be a woman, but now they are men. But they in these particular types of ministries and they say the gifts of God are falling like rain. Fire is falling. The Holy Ghost is falling. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Abu Shaytayana Help me, Lord. In the name of Jesus, sisters and brothers, I'm not nowhere near telling you that I've got every eye across every feet. But I'm trying. I, my wrong is wrong. I'm trying to right and wrong. It's because I may not confess to you. But God, I know God knows me and I know me. Okay? I, and I want to be right. And I want you to be right. Praise the Lord. I'm not no way knocking you, putting you down. But if wrong is wrong, God has already put it down. I'm not putting it down. I'm only quoting to you this because you got you got some of us are so slick. Some of you are so slick that you know how to twist and try to turn the word. The bottom line is when you get in the word wrong, it's going to be wrong, right, it's going to be right. And I don't care how you twist it and how many scriptures you know, wrong is still wrong. And remember the Bible says, be not deceived. Galatians 6 and 7. God is not mocked whatsoever man reapeth that so we also sow. Don't forget in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 9 it says, Be not deceived. Let me go, go to that again. I, I, the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. All right. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and uh, verse 9. Oh, what? Do you not know that unrighteous people will not inherit God's kingdom? Do not be misled, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men kept for unnatural purposes, homosexuality, effeminacy, nor men who lie with men, okay, nor thieves, nor greedy persons, nor drunkards, nor revilers, loving a good time, nor people that extortion people, rip people off of stuff and kind of stuff, will inherit the kingdom of God. So, we have some things to repent of, brothers and sisters. Because we can get caught out there just like that, even though you claim to be, you be playing or doing right, you be doing right. But the devil can get you in the blink eye, you can get in the audience, you can get in a fight, you can take something, and it can be the smallest thing. 
and you have to repent and, and, and pay attention that the devil can get you just at a blink of an eye, just at a snap of a finger, and your mind was on the Lord. Just as quick as it is to bat your eyes and snap your finger, the devil will get you. Praise the Lord. Amen. So we're getting ready to leave here, but in the name of the Lord, we just want God to uh, continue to bless us, and we want men to be men. Homosexuality is wrong. Being a feminine man is wrong. And if we ask the question, or being a masculine woman is wrong. So you say, what should I do? I'm, I'm, I got a personal walk with the Lord. Don't, don't, you got to get that spirit out of you. Because the Bible says so. And I'm only quoting you what the Bible says. I done gave you scripture. Look in Romans chapter 1, after verse 16. Look in Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Look at Deut uh, Leviticus 20 uh, and 13 and 22. Uh, 18 and 20, Leviticus 18 and 22. Look at Genesis chapter 19. Look what happened with Adam and Eve. None of this alternative new stuff. See, all this new stuff because we got a church on every block. You got to remember, as a, as a people that have been uh, misled, especially people of color, church became a business because it was the only thing that some of them could do to keep their head above water. So more so than just the word of God, it was a way of channeling a uh, message uh, politically, uh, non-politically, spiritually, as well as economically. Helping some people is a job for some people. Okay? It, it's become a, it has become a business. It's a business now right now. Look all around. These big, large ministries, if you say it's not a business, you're lying to yourself. I try to, uh, you know, be very humble about it. Coming up through the years, I've been in ministry for years. And the reason why I'm not out there on the mainstream and my, not my name is known by some and not known by some because of the fact that I didn't go for it in the money aspect. But I still need money. You understand what I'm saying? But I need more God. That's the mindset that I put. So God has given me a measure of faith. He has given you a measure of faith. But maybe God has given me the gift of faith. You saw those shots. I don't know those shots. Hallelujah. Uh, um, you know what I mean? So, you know what I mean? So some people can walk in more faith than others, but we all walk in faith. But some of us have more faith than others. But, and then even that, that's going to be some of my next, you know, uh, preaching all around, wherever, is about, you know, it's nothing new, but it's the same thing. you got to be mindful. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. So if God has given you faith to trust in him, you can't just trust him over here, but don't trust him over there. you got to trust him over here, over there, all around. Praise the Lord. And I know it's a little bit difficult. It's a little bit difficult, you know what I mean? Because people, and not because of people, because of our yeah. The people around us tempt us, but necessarily all of them don't make us do what we do. We get tempted. Somebody said the devil, I'm going to add this in person. Somebody said the devil was sitting on this test you already. I heard it for years. And the devil was saying, everything that they say I do, I didn't do. But he tempted them, and you know, the devil's sitting on his chest crying, he's a liar and a deceiver. He just wants somebody to feel sorry. You can't feel sorry for the devil because he is guilty. He's guilty. He's sitting on his step talking about he didn't do it. And then we get up there and talk about the devil didn't make you do it. You made yourself go, well, the evil that then is the influence of the devil. So you lying in the devil lying. Ah, yeah. Glory. Help me, Lord, in the name of Jesus. This speaking in tongue is not for you. It's to help strengthen my soul for me to do the work that's cut out for me. And the main thing is to remind you, man, be a man, stay a man, and walk in the righteousness of a man in the word of God. Woman, you are a woman. Stay a woman. Walk in the spirit of the Lord as a woman should walk. Amen. Keep it feminine. Keep it sweet. Keep it dainty. Keep it the way God would have a woman with a meek wife. Don't try to be like a man. You may be impressed by your daddy, but you're not your daddy. Your daddy's of another gender. You may be impressed by your pastor, should be a man. And your pastor, you may be a good leader, but you're not supposed to copy, you know, their total being. They are men. You are a woman. But take what they're teaching with righteousness and incorporate it in a feminine way, as well as men. You have good women that under you, your mother, your aunts, your sisters, your cousins, and, and whatever. Uh, ladies that you, that influence you, but 
learn their knowledge to learn how a woman thinks and what a woman thinks about a man. But don't be, you don't act like a woman. Be a man. That's what you are. So when I say be a man, be a righteous man. Walk in the spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. Most Heavenly Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we ask that you touch every individual that has been of line to listen to this word right now. Bless their heart. Bless their soul. Bless their spirit. Satan, I come against your lion spirit of God, in the name of Jesus, bind every demon and bring us to the knowledge of the truth. God, even me, uh, your, your man, Help me, God. I'm nothing without you. Sometimes I don't feel like I'm anything with you, but your word tells me, walk by faith and not by sight. Help, Lord. Help, Lord. Help, Lord. Help, Lord. Help, Lord. Have mercy in the name of Jesus. Touch that home. Touch that man. Touch that woman. Touch those children. Touch on that job and the schools everywhere, north, south, east, and west. In Jesus' name we pray. May heaven Father, for you, beloved, be the man that God wants you to be and keep on trying. There may be faults and failures in you, but the race is not given to the swift or the strong, but to you that endure to the end. Woman, try to be everything that God would have you to be. You may have faults and failures, but at the same time, amen, the race is not given to the swift or the strong. So don't give up. Amen. Uh, sometimes, even like myself, I talk hard to people and people have spoken hard to me. But if you made up your mind, even if you got to leave from over there to over there, and wherever I'm at, I'm going to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to serve the Lord. He didn't tell the woman at the well to go to no particular place. Hebrews 10 and 25 says, forsake not the assembly. So when I walk into any service that we call the church, I'm at home. Preach. Praise the Lord, sing song. I'm going to clap, I'm going to praise them, I'm going to get up and leave. I don't have to join your facility. And when I'm preaching, uh, prophesying, or teaching, healing, whatever the Lord will allow me to do, when you come to me, I'm not going to ask you to join with no signing of the paper because the Holy Ghost is what's going to make me and you a part of the same body. Hallelujah! It's not a signature on a piece of paper. And if God should bless me, because that's another thing I talked about, you know what I mean, tithe. Some of you believe in tithes. I'm not going to get into that with you, but I do believe in Luke that says, I mean, uh, a given it shall be given unto you. A press down, shaking together, will men give unto your, you know, to your bosom. I believe in giving. That's a, that's better to give than to receive. But God has to put you in a position where you can give. You can't give, but you don't have. And so it's sad when you go to services and, and, and commercialized churches that they throw into the money that they won't even let you preach no matter what, what kind of gift you have. And no matter how talented you are, because you don't have, so they use that as against you. Or they ain't, you ain't paying time. I've been through that. I can't give you what I don't have. And I'm not a fool. I'm not going to give you my rent money. I'm not giving it to you. I done seen too many people put out doors in the devotion. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Folks walking into to your service in the, in, the, in, the, in the evening, coming home late at night because you hold the service long. It's all right. Praise the Lord as long as you want. But then when a woman gets raped or somebody like, come on, man. And then, and then they got to be afraid and feel uh, ashamed to ask somebody for a ride. And they come into the here you preach. And you're not making sure that the ladies and men, not just ladies, but men get around. They get robbed, too. They get raped, too. They get beaten in the head, too. They get murdered, too. If they come into your service, I don't want you coming to my service. And you don't have a sad of shape. You don't have a safety net, amen, to get you home. Hallelujah. And I don't want you to feel like you less than a man, less than a woman, because you have to ask a brother or sister for a ride home. Praise the Lord. So I'm looking for God to establish me in that arena so that I can be there for those that are there for me and for the Lord. Hallelujah. God bless you. I'm not telling you not to go to church. Go to church. Go, go to temple. Go to synagogue. That's what it really is. Temple and synagogue. Praise the Lord. Temple, uh, Hebrews 10 and 25. Forsake not the assembling of yourself together with the saints. Get together with them. Clap your hands. Sing. Put your praise on. Amen. Hear the word. Hear the spirit of the Lord. And pray that you are under an anointed. 
that man of God, where he can impart to you, he can project into you the, the true living word of God through the unction of the, the, Moshe, the Holy Spirit, where it makes you grow to the right man of God. So if you've got any unclean spirit, you'll be working on getting every unclean spirit out of you. If you're an unclean woman, it'll make you a better woman and get all the unclean spirits out of you and make you the woman of God that God is calling for in these last and evil days. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Help, Lord. Help. Uh, amen. 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 God is good. He's worthy to be praised. And uh, it's going to be all right. Some, I had something else to say, but it's been less. It's time to go.